Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Jess Holland, and today it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Paul Burton back on the show. He is the Managing Director of Surefire Resources, and the ticker code is SRN. So, hi, Paul. It's great to have you back. Yeah, hi, Jess. It's good to be back. Thanks very much. So, Paul, uh, Surefire just put out an outstanding pre-feasibility study uh, for the Victory Ball Vanadium project. But before we get into more detail on the PFS results, I thought it might be a good idea for you to just give a brief overview of the company um, in terms of its projects, where they're located, um, and also what you're what you're focused on at the moment. Sure. Well, I mean, we're a West Australian-based, Perth-based um, exploration company. We've got three significant projects, a vanadium, a gold, and a, and a magnetite project, and our focus throughout the last year and a half has been on the uh, the Victory Ball Vanadium project because this is a huge resource for us and uh, the pre fees is a milestone and we have really strong development plans. So that's where our focus has been. Well, firstly, Paul, congratulations on the successful completion of your PFS um, at the project. So can you elaborate on the key findings um, of the PFS at the Victory Ball Vanadium project and what they mean uh, in terms of the project's viability? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, this was a very, very strong um, study that was carried out by some uh, experts in the vanadium industry that we've used for, for a while, Snowdens and METs. And we did it at a very conservative uh, approach and a very detailed approach. So the NPV at a 10% discount uh, comes in at um, just over 1.7 billion Australian dollars. So a very robust project and a, um, an IRR of 42%. So yeah, a very, very strong project. And obviously when we move into the next phase, which is a, the DFS, uh, we will tighten down on the, the costs to a plus or minus 10 or 15 percent. Um, and we expect, uh, obviously, the financial metrics will, will, will change accordingly, but there's plenty of room there to keep a very, very strong project and certainly a bankable project. Yeah. So, Paul, the PFS also included um, the release of a maiden probable ore reserve of 93 metric tonnes at 0.35 percent vanadium oxide. What is the significance of this all reserve estimate and how does that impact the project's economics as a whole? Well, transitioning from your um, JORC measured and indicated resources into a probable ore reserve is based on economics. So essentially having a, uh, an ore reserve means that you have an economic deposit and that's a huge asset value and for the, uh, for the company. Yeah, thanks, Paul. So also, the, the PFS mentions that the offshore processing um, is the right approach uh, for this particular project. Can you explain why that's the case? And also, what are the key factors that influence this decision? Well, I think if we look at most uh, resource projects in Australia at the moment, they're um, experiencing uh, very large cost blowouts, both in operating costs and also capital costs. And that is going to continue. It's a very expensive uh, place for to build complex processing plants. So our view all along was that um, to keep this operation simple, to have an open cut mining and then a simple beneficiation to extract the magnetite and then do offshore processing We're in, a, in a jurisdiction that has very low power um, costs. So um, to keep your operating costs down. So we looked at several jurisdictions and we settled on Saudi and we approached Saudi as it's one of the lowest power um, uh, cost jurisdictions in the world. In fact, it's the third lowest across the board for, for um, fuel, diesel, gas, power, everything. It's extremely low cost. So this really was, a, was an impetus for us. And when we approached the Saudi government, um, it was revealed that they were actually looking for downstream processing mineral projects. And uh, it was a complete match straight away. And since then, things have moved quite quite quickly. So clearly, having a uh, an operation where we can keep our capital costs down and our operating costs down uh, makes a project feasible. And um, you know, we can do it probably a third of the price of of someone actually trying to build a complex processing plant um, out in the bush in a remote area in, in Australia. 
Um, but the other important factor is that if we're producing the end products, we want to be close to market. And uh, Saudi at the moment has some massive um, uh, projects that it's that it's building. It's a net importer of its vanadium uh, and uh, a lot of iron ore. And um, we can meet a lot of their demand um, for their projects that they're building. So not only does it make a lot of sense for us to produce it in a low cost environment, but the market is right there as well. And anything that is extra, we've got Europe on the doorstep as well, as opposed to if you're building it in the middle of nowhere in Australia, then you're shipping it down to a port. It's then got to go out to market around the world. So it's, it's, a, it's a much streamlined, um, it's a very pragmatic approach we've adopted. And I think this is going to be the first Vanadium project to get back up off, uh, in, into, into operation in the short term. Yeah, that's so interesting. Thanks, Paul. I think, you know, this this partnership with Saudi Arabia obviously offers significant advantages. You mentioned, you know, reduced operating mm -hmm. costs and also the access to nearby markets. You also mentioned Europe. Um, I'm wondering if you could just elaborate a little bit on the specific cost savings um, and also the market opportunities that this partnership presents. Yes, well, first of all, it's, a, it's not a partnership with the Saudi government. We're, we're looking for a Saudi partner in over there. And um, in fact, we have had introductions from the Ministry of Investment already to some significant companies. Um, and we were in the process of exchanging confidentiality agreements. And we will meet them when we go to Saudi in, uh, in January, which is just next month now, at the Future Minerals Forum. Um, we've had good meetings on teams with them. So look, we, we are... Part of our business plan is to have a Saudi partner operate the processing plants in, in Saudi for a number of advantages. I mean, they know the country, they know the approvals process. And one of the requirements for the Saudi government is to improve employment and also to upskill um, the local population. So we're meeting that, those requirements uh, as well there. With respect to cost savings, I mean, as a rule of thumb, our estimates in our in our um, research and all this, everything in, in Saudi is probably one-sixth of what we're um, be paying in, in Australia. So that's the order of magnitude of savings that we're getting, both from the construction, uh, constructability, but, and also from uh, your operating costs. Oh, that's a massive uh, cost reduction over there, one-sixth of that in Australia. Um, and particularly as we see so much inflation uh, globally, rising interest rates. Um, that certainly would position the the company uh, and and this Victoria, uh, Victory Bor, sorry, project um, in, in a sense to have much more favorable economics compared to maybe some of your Australian based projects. Um, so just pivoting. There's no, sorry, Jess, there's no doubt that um, uh, not only does, does the economics stack up, but um, the Saudi government has openly stated that they want to become an industrial hub for mineral processing and to feed the world. So we're moving the, the centric away from China, if you, if you like. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we've had extremely favourable discussions with the government and the government agencies, the Royal Commission, for these industrial cities that they're building, which we, we will um, have our process plants in. Um, it's, uh, it's a perfect time for us to be... Uh, be talking to them about this. Yeah, fantastic, Paul. And now, what are the next major milestones for the Victory Ball project? And, and what is the sort of anticipated timeline for achieving those milestones? Well, I think a big milestone is going to be the um, execution of an agreement with a, uh, a Saudi-based company. And um, as I say, uh, we, we are meeting some companies uh, next month at the Future Minerals Forum. And um, things could move quite quite swiftly as they have done uh, already. The other major milestone that we will achieve is the completion of the, the DFS, Definitive Feasibility Study, which is what we will move into rather rapidly now. Um, and it will be focused on the Victory Ball mine site, where we're going to detail down now the exact um, layout of the mine um, schedule and also the Benny plant. For producing the magnetite so that'll be be dovetailed down and we think we can complete that quite quickly because it's sim it's a very simple operation uh, uh, relatively speaking 
On the Saudi side, once we have a partner involved, then they can drive all of the approvals process, um, indeed, with our, with our assistance, of course. And um, we expect that to move, move quite quickly too. So I, I think, you know, uh, uh, in my mind, we have a very strong news flow coming up of significant milestones because we have a, a very interesting and engaged um, jurisdiction in Saudi that uh, uh, is very interested in our project. Um, the other thing that really appeals to them is the size of our project. I mean, we increased our mineral resource uh, to over 400 million tonnes, and that's just based on, on the areas that we, we're looking to mine. The actual resource runs for over 21 kilometres. This is a huge resource. So at, at this stage, we're looking at a mining uh, life of about 24 years, but there's absolutely no doubt that this will go on for probably 100 years. And this is very appealing to the Saudis as well because they like long life projects because they're moving away from their dependence on oil and gas. Oh, that's a massive resource and yeah, massive project area as well. Now, just moving over to kind of the um, a more macro outlook, Paul, um, what is your outlook for the vanadium market and, and how does the Victory Bore project position Surefire to capitalize on this market growth in your opinion? Oh, look, the, the, the vanadium market uh, is steady. It, uh, it it does continue to grow. I mean, as we build more cities, we build taller buildings, then more vanadium gets used into the reinforced bars, the rebars. So there is a growth um, of, of the vanadium in, in the marketplace. Um, supply is the, is the interesting thing. I mean, a lot of supply came out of China and Russia. Clearly, there's some issues with both those jurisdictions uh, now. Um, South Africa is very, very expensive to produce vanadium. Then you're really left with LIGO resources in, uh, in Brazil, still one of the key um, performers. Um, the vanadium price is always the, uh, the, the issue with vanadium. So you must keep your operating costs as low as possible. So we have a clear margin at, at even at, at today's relatively low uh, vanadium prices. But the key for the vanadium projects is not to rely on vanadium you must extract maximum value out of the deposit. And as we've shown in our PFS, we can design our process plant to extract um, other products which are very, very um, uh, in demand, uh, particularly in Saudi Arabia. So pig iron, we've got high purity vanadium, which we can, we can tap off. We're lucky we have all our vanadium in the magnetite. So we get a very good recovery and we can get very, very high stream of, uh, of, of good quality vanadium. Um, we can produce a, uh, a titanium um, slag product, which goes into, uh, into commercial use for pigment. So you need to mix up your products so they can buffer any issues with, with, uh, with, with price fluctuations. But in general, vanadium is, uh, is a, an extremely uh, in-demand mineral. And as we see it, we utilize more into vanadium redox batteries, which incidentally the Saudis are very, very keen on as well. And that's something that we are also talking to them and I expect some news flow on that side of it as well. Um, then the demand really does need to, uh, will increase um, and there probably isn't enough supply. So luckily with our Victory Bore, we can upscale supply of magnetite, the concentrate at any time. Um, so we can actually produce a much more and service probably more than one jurisdiction if we if we wanted to. So um, yeah, I think the outlook for vanadium as a as a as a business is uh, is very strong. Yeah, no, fantastic. And Paul, you mentioned um, the application of vanadium in redox batteries. What are some of the other applications of vanadium? Uh, just for our small caps audience who might not be as familiar with this with this metal or mineral? Well, vanadium principally is used in the steel industry. So for, 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 reinforced, <coughs> for reinforced bars, it's, a, it's an element that uh, strengthens um, steel. Um, so it's used in high quality steels, it's used in the military um, applications, it's used in, um, in aircraft as, as well. Um, so those are the, the, the main uh, ferro alloy aspects of it. But uh, the other growing um, uses is, is uh, using the vanadium element in um, vanadium redox batteries. As an element, it has a unique property where it can retain an electric charge. So if you extract the electrolyte out of the, uh, the vanadium itself, then um, 
that uh, can be used in what they call the vanadium redox flow batteries, which is a flow battery. Um, been around for, for a while, but the application and the use of them is growing considerably now, and China is leading the way mm -hmm. by building many of these re vanadium redox batteries in some of their regional and major cities. Yeah, so interesting. And, and all of those applications, so very important um, for, you know, every country. And we're seeing a lot of uh, countries now trying to secure supply of critical minerals, um, you know, particularly, you know, China having a lot of the sort of grip on a lot of critical minerals at the moment. So it's it's really interesting to see, yep. um, you know, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. coming in and, and trying to secure critical minerals as well on their side, um, vanadium being being one and, and all of those applications that you mentioned that it's used for. Um, so very interesting. And yeah, I just have one final question for you, Paul, and that's, you know, just giving us two or three key takeaways. Um, you know, we've discussed all of these uh, wonderful uh, things that are happening, um, you know, the advantages of vanadium, also the PFS coming out, but just two or three key takeaways for our audience as to why they should put uh, Showify resources on their stock watch list. Well, look, I mean, completing a pre-feasibility study with such a very strong um, out output is, uh, is, is one of the key uh, features of our company now. Uh, we actually have something that um, is demonstrable and real and can see us going into, into development. Um, with a very interesting um, jurisdiction that not only has uh, an interest in the product and the project, but has the money to, to fund things. So um, it's very exciting for, for us from that perspective. But the other thing is, I mean, we are, we are not just a, a, a vanadium project company. We have a very interesting gold uh, resource. So investors get exposure to, uh, to this gold resource as well and also a very large magnetite um, deposit as well, which we have mentioned as well to the, to the Ministry of Investment in Saudi. And uh, I'm sure that will become a topic of conversation as we move into the Future Minerals Forum next month. So, yes, uh, we have a, uh, a very strong company, not reflected in our share price at all, but uh, we expect that to change uh, significantly soon. Yeah, and Paul, you're definitely not alone. I think a lot of companies are feeling that way at the moment. Um, yeah, and I think everyone's looking forward to having a break at the end of this year because it has been quite a big one and a really big one for Surefire Resources. It's it's good to end on such a positive note with, you know, very, very positive uh, PFS results from your project. Um, but thank you again, Paul. Thanks for joining us um, on the show. It's always lovely to catch up and to have a chat with you. And uh, yeah, and learn about the company and and all of the goals that you're kicking at the moment. So yeah, thanks for coming to chat. Thanks very much, Jess. It's always a pleasure.